All right, guys, how are we doing? Welcome to today's stream. I'm excited to do another one of these for you. Uh, I thought we'd try something a bit different because what do we have in the first week? So this is the fourth week in a row that we have done these streams. And I say we because I do them, but you're here and you're taking part. So we're doing these together. Um, there's no point in me doing it if you guys aren't here. So uh, shout out to you guys for being here. And together we are going to be exploring some post-flop stuff today. Um, the first week then we looked at some ICM spots. The second week was some DTO three-way. Then last week we did a HRC live stream, which was good. Uh, it went quite long actually. It's like an hour and 15 minutes or something. And then today we're gonna to be doing some post-flop uh, study. And so my goal, my aim today is to show you how to approach study and make sure that we don't just um, line check. And I'll, as we go, I'll, I'll explain like why, why it's important to do that, why it's important to study the the spot and get a better understanding of what's going on rather than line checking, um, but also give you some ideas of questions to ask yourself as uh, as we go along. So yeah, let's uh, let's just see who's here first. Uh, so I see West Wales Ed says evening. How's it going, Ed? And Walks is here as well. How's it going? I'm um, sure there are other people in the chat. Uh, looks like it, um, but maybe just shy at the moment or just want to learn. They're here to learn and. Don't want to be uh, messaging saying hello. Um, right, let's get into it then. So um, I marked quite a few spots. This is from yesterday's session. And um, yeah, what was quite, quite interesting actually is very often when we study, um, it can often be spots that we lose, right? But like looking at these marked hands, like I won quite a few of these. So that's good. I think that's good because it means that we're not just focusing on hands we lost, thinking that, well, we lost them, so there must have been a problem. Um, that's not always the case. Sometimes we can win a hand and play it badly. Sometimes we can lose a hand and play it really well. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Dan Rambo says, hi, how's it going? Uh, Yanis Maestro says, hey, awesome. Welcome, guys, to the stream. Uh, streaming on both Twitch and YouTube, so welcome to YouTube and Twitch viewers. Um, all right, Darren Piper. Says Easy G on uh, YouTube. All right, so we open here uh, with Queen Jack off from the uh, low jack and big blind defense, and we get this board. Um, now, I guess like yeah, a question to you guys would be, you know, what's your overall approach, the overarching strategy on on this board? Because like, what we really want to do is this, right? We we don't want to be worrying about our exact hand right now. It's important to understand, but for now, like, what's the overarching strategy? Is it, you know, check a lot? Is it bet a lot? If we are going to bet a lot, do, what size do we like using? Is it a mix between bet small and bet big? Is it a mix between everything, like bet big, bet small, and check? Like, what do you guys, um, what do you guys think? Just, uh, just give me your thoughts. And if you're not, if you're not at that level yet where you know that, then just try and give some thoughts and sort of some some logical reasons as well. Um, so West Wales Ed has gone straight in and says, high frequency, big bet on ABB boards. I think that's good. Fuzzy Ferret says, hi. Hi, Fuzzy. Um, so let's let's try and think about why. So Ed, Ed's gone straight in with the high frequency, big bet on ABB boards. We want to think about why that is the case, if, that's, if that is indeed the case. Um, and if you can make a logical argument for this being correct, then chances are it's correct, right? Yanis Maestro is saying bet half pot. Um, yeah, I mean, I think at this stack size, half uh, half pot's going to be close to like, or the big bet's going to be close to half pot anyway. So I think, uh, yeah, it could be, could be more like, you know, maybe like 55, 60% pot as the big bet. So, um, but that's certainly something we'll look at in a moment. Ed's gone on to say, really great board for our opening range from EP. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing, right? We've got straights, we've got sets, we've got two pair. Big blind is probably going to three bet aces and jacks and tens and maybe even ace jack. Um, both of you can have king queen, of course, and then we've gonna we're gonna have hands like ace king when our opponent isn't going to have those hands. Uh, let's have a look at YouTube. Lots of lots of bets, some small, likely zero check. Says JB. Nikita says eighty five percent c bet in this stack. Um, small. 
I'm not sure what you mean, Nikita. So uh, you said 85% C-bet. Oh, you mean, so bet 85% of the time, but for a small size. That's the overarching strategy. Okay, I think I understand. I understand what you mean. So yeah, my approach here is going to be big bet quite often, but I think there's probably going to be some small betting. I don't think we want to bet big with aces, for example. And we can't just go small with aces and then, you know, big with everything else. So uh, yeah, we'll, um, let's take a, well, let, I'll show you what happened in the, in the hand. So uh, I went big bet. Uh, we can get called by... Uh, weaker hands here. Some Jack X and 10X hands actually uh, start folding. Um, so like Jack X of hearts, if it's not like King Jack of hearts or Queen Jack of hearts, stuff like that, it's probably actually gonna start folding. Like Jack nine of hearts, Jack eight of hearts. I'm not even sure if like Jack nine of clubs is indifferent. We'll have a look in a moment. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of hands we're trying to get value from. We obviously got a really strong hand. I don't think we're gonna see too much raising on this board, but we'll have a look at that as well. Um, so yeah, that's... Uh, so what I chose to do. Um, the turn was a three of clubs. And I think, it's, yeah, this is a, an interesting point in the hand. I really don't like betting here because it doesn't really accomplish anything. So earlier on, I said, like, why do we want to go big on this board? Ed came in with some, uh, some ideas about why. Um, and I said, like, if you can come up with ideas to support your know, logical ideas that can support your argument, then chances are that they're correct. Um, if we bet here... Jack X and 10X hands are going to start folding. We're never going to get a better hand to fold. An ace doesn't fold, and a hand like King Jack uh, don't think folds. So it doesn't really make sense to bet. If 10X hands are going to fold, Jack X hands are going to fold. I guess you could get a value from like all of those Jack X to club hands, but remember I wasn't 100% sure whether they're going to continue on the flop anyway. So uh, yeah, I think that this turn card is a blank or something else we should maybe talk about. Blank turn card in position against a big blind is generally going to be big bet or check. And if your hand isn't worth, you know, a big bet for value, or it's like it's too good to, to, to bluff for a big bet, then the only other option is to go ahead and check. Um, Nikita on YouTube says, could you provide the Twitch link, please? Yeah, I mean, it's basically the same as the YouTube link, but um, twitch.tv forward slash um mtt mtt poker school um, but i'll post it in here one second uh okay west wales ed says bit of a brick on the turn doesn't help big blind but also doesn't help us he can still have asex that calls pre very true i think the board is still going to be really really good for us we've still got all of those strong hands we mentioned on the flop but it doesn't make sense to bet this uh this hand so yeah that so the thing the questions i want to ask in in this when we look at the the sim is is that correct? Like, am I thinking along the right lines? Like, are there any Jack X hands? Like, can we bet King Jack because we can get value from the Jack X of club hands and Queen Jack? Is that what's going on? Um, can we bet all of our Ace X hands because, again, they're going to call with pair plus draw? Um, that's something we want to look at. Also, like, what do we bluff on uh, on the turn here? Are we looking at hands? I don't know, like Queen Nine suited. Are we looking uh, for? Uh, like small pairs trying to get them to fold a jack or a 10. Like these are all the questions that we should be should be asking here. Um, just have a look. Since we're in EP, big blind pre pushing not all ace X, so we still want to check back turn a lot of second pairs. Um, yeah, but like think about the logic as well. Maybe I'm wrong because I formerly uh, from cash mid stakes, hard for me to play 35 bigs and less. Okay, cool. Uh, I think ace X will be quite linear on turn for reasons mentioned above. Uh, yeah, okay, so you might think that like ace, ace two, if we have it, um, starts doing some checking, maybe. Um, okay, so we check back, and the river is a queen, and so the question here is, is it too thin to go for value? Um, what do you guys think? Is it too thin to go for value here? What's the, what's the worst hand we can bet for value on the river, do you reckon? Just waiting for some chats to come through, guys. Uh, so what do you think is the worst hand we can go for value? Well, I mean, Ed, Ed's going for ace nine, getting value from worse ace x. And I just said queen jack was too thin. But Ed's, 
Ed's taking that that ri that thin and, and just making it like razor thin. All right, one pair. All right. Anybody anybody else got any votes here? Do you think we can value bet um like ace queen? Ace queen too thin? Like can we literally only value bet a king? Uh, Nikita says it seems like practically we can in uh, in an MTT. Okay, let's uh, let's let's have a look. Let's go to the uh, let's go to the sim. Lots of things to uh, to think about. Um, here we go then. All right. So the first thing was like, what does our overarching strategy look like here? But remember, guys, we're not looking about what hand we had, whether we played the hand well. It doesn't honestly. It doesn't really matter. I see like. A lot of uh, line checking going on, especially in the browser-based uh, apps now. It's just not its not a good way to, to do it. We can go like, oh yeah, look, Queen Jack off bets big most of the time. Brilliant, let's move on. But really, you want to see like, what's the overarching strategy? I mean, you can see it's big bet and check. But there is a little bit of small betting. I mentioned this before. Um, that, uh, yeah, aces maybe doesn't want to go big all the time. Um, and then how are we going to balance that? We've got some other ace X hands to, to bet. Kings maybe go small sometimes. Um, makes a lot of sense to bet ten, uh, tens big, unblocking hands that can continue. Uh, Ed says, got a value bet two pair in my opinion. Don't think he checks a king on the river. Okay, so if he never checks a king on the river, um, like he never really has a good hand, <laughs> right? Um, so that's a really awful position to him for him to be in, right? So from a... A game theory point of view, he's got to check some King X hands. Uh, let's have a look. Um, I don't think we have value here. Any bet that gets raised, we have to fold. Um, yeah, but we're not, you know, we absolutely, but we don't value bet. You don't always think about value betting, but yeah, you don't not value bet because you're worried about getting raised. You don't value bet because you don't think there's enough hands that you, um, that you can get value from. Plus, like what you're saying is true, that when you get raised, you, you're not loving life. Um, okay, so yeah, so big big bet looks uh, looks decent. Um, I mentioned this earlier on. So again, like when you're coming to, to study this kind of stuff, it's good to look at what kind of hands continue. Um, I said the Jack X hands would would start folding, right? Which is which is true. So like Jack X are heart hands unless they were they are King Jack and Queen Jack, as you can see. Um, but actually, if you look at it, 10x is uh, 10x is, is is folding as well. So if we just have a quick look at why this is happening, our equity is just massive, right? We just you know, Ed mentioned this earlier on. We have so much equity here. We're just at a massive advantage. We've got position. We've got all the strong hands. We've got a massive equity advantage. So our opponent is forced to overfold, right? So when we you know, when we bet big with like pocket fours here, for example, all of the 10x hands fold. A lot of the gut shots fold. Um, Jack X of hearts folds. So it's just such a massive win to go for a big bet here. Um, whenever I see players check on this board, I just like think that they don't they don't know what's going on. Uh, so yeah, make sure that we're make sure that you're betting with like you know everything. Uh, let's have a look. Mr. Jam on Twitch says hello, guys. Hey, Mr. Jam, how's it going? Shout out to Arton for the follow. Let's turn the sound down a bit. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that, but it was quite loud then. Um, okay, so we've got a pretty good idea of what their range looks like. I said there wasn't going to be much raising. There's a, yeah, maybe more than I was expecting. Ace Jack and Ace Ten going to raise. Jack Ten as well. King Queen uh, is a straight, so doing a lot of calling. Some bluffing going on here as well with Queen Ten, and also some like Jack X and um, yeah, Jack X, Jack Two and Jack Three, probably because yeah, we've got like Ace Four in here and Pocket Fours. But there's like twos and threes. So there's always this like trend. You can see like two and three here doing a lot of raising. And then if we see like why is that happening? It's because twos and threes don't exist in our range to begin with. And so uh, looks like there's a tiny bit of twos in there actually. Um, so they uh, unblock folds, right? So if we go for a raise here, you know, we're getting all of these hands to fold. So if we had like jack nine, jack eight, jack seven, jack six, you know, we're blocking a lot of hands that are going to bet fold. Um, I mean, yeah, so it doesn't make sense to, to raise those hands. Although having said that, it is a jack, right? I'm so like it is already better than these hands. Um oh, okay, right. Well, this is really interesting. So we block pocket jacks, we block two pair and, and a pair plus draw. Plus we can actually start generating folds from kings and queens. Um which is yeah, 
probably the main thing. And also some ASEX hands without the backdoor flush draw. So like weaker ASEX hands of hearts starts folding. So that's like already some uh, pretty big learning, I think. Um, okay, the turn was the three of clubs, never expecting the uh, the big blind to, to lead on this uh, on this board. Let's see if I can bring this in so you guys can see. So we start seeing some leads on Jack, a king, and an ace. So either pairing the board or completing a straight. Although Queen X doesn't doesn't seem to want to do that. Um, and I said it was always going to be big bet and check on this turn card. And this isn't because I've had a look at the sim. This is just because I know that on a blank turn card, it's going to go big bet and check. Like I've I'm yet to see off you know shallower stack sizes, off maybe even bigger sizes as well. But um, off these stack sizes that there would ever be a small bet. You're just gonna go polar on the on the on a blank turn. Like just always. Um okay, so Queen Jack is a pure check. King uh, Queens is pure check. Ace is like pretty much pure check. Kings is mixing. We do actually start checking some some Asex hands. I think someone said this. Maybe Ed again on the money. Um kind of linear uh betting the best Asex hands. Checking these ones, uh, ace three is two pair, so it's going to bet. This is uh, this is pretty good to uh, pretty good to see. Our weakest hand, sort of lowest equity hand betting, uh, really frequently. Yeah, that's the literally the worst one, right? Let's have a look at. Um, yeah, really really poor hand, but um, bluffing, you know unblocks a lot, of, a lot of hands that will fold uh, on the turn. Silly Poker says, yeah, because we bet everything on the flop. Yep, not sure what that was in reference to. Was that the fact that we had polar on the turn? If so, then awesome. Uh, okay, so happy that, um, yeah, I guess the, the one more thing, oops, let's try and get this into the screen. One more thing I wanted to, to just highlight is, um, this polar nature so like yes there is some stuff going on in here but generally it's like top pair plus and then and then some bluffs as well um third pair just probably just still you know can just generate folds from from jack x at this point and maybe even some asex so let's have a quick look yeah some asex starts to fold some jack x yep yeah, starts to fold uh okay cool so to go check check and then the river which was a card, a queen of hearts. So let's have a look. Uh, Ed on Twitch says, nice takeaway there is the lower uh, pocket pairs there more we bet on turn getting bigger pairs to fold. Um, yeah, remember like he the uh, big blind won't have many bigger pairs, right? Um, like they'll either fold it on the flop. Do you mean like a Jack X hand or a, an Ace X hand or a 10 X hand? Is that what you mean? Um, this is the point that Ed's making here, is that fours bets more than, say, nines. Um, and when you do bet fours, yeah, there's no other... That, uh, our opponent doesn't have a have a pocket pair, but they are starting to fold, like, king 10, queen 10, jack x without a club, some ace x. It's, like, really, really huge. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's really good. Uh, so, yeah, the river was the queen of hearts. And, again, I think it was Ed who said look, they don't think they would ever check a queen... Uh, sorry, a king for a straight... Um, but if they don't, then they're left with like a very weak range, right? Just one pair, one pair uh, hand. So they absolutely should check some kings, as you can see here. And I th let's have a look. So Queen Jack, it's a bit of betting, but seems too thin. Uh, seems too thin to me. But we wanted to see like what the worst hand was that we that we um, can value bet. And I just realized if we look at like top pair, none, no top pair is betting. And I'm like, well, where's ace, king, ace, uh, sorry, ace, queen and ace, uh, well, yeah, ace, queen, basically. But ace, queen always bets the turn. So many hands to get value from. We're just always betting ace, queen. So no ace is going to bet the river. I know Ed, you were going for like a thin value bet with ace, nine. Going to be too, way too thin. Um, let's have a look at this. So, yeah, two pair is is somewhat thin. Sets, you can bet a set of queens on the river, and then obviously you're going to bet all of your straights. Okay. Um, what kind of hands are we going to bluff? Hands where we decided to check. So like 8-7 was going to bet again a lot on the turn, like 7-6. Seven, 9-7 seven does quite a decent amount of checking. 
and we know we know what our opponent's range looks like. It's, yeah, some straights, but also some ace x hands or some like you know jack x of club hands, even some you know jack x of diamond hands as well, because no bet went on, went in on the turn. Um, it says, how come we can bet sets but not two pair? Well, let's uh, let's have a look at uh, what our opponent calls with. Um, so they're indifferent with ace x. I mean, folding a lot of ace x to be honest. But then uh, we'll call ace three. We'll call ace two. Call jack three. Nine eights are straight. Uh, queen eights indifferent. Jack ten. So we get to bet top set. Uh, top set. Second set because we uh, get value from from weaker hands. Yeah, queen jack, queen ten. Um, queen eight, some ace x. Um, whereas we can't bet queen jack because it's too, it's even thinner than that, right? Um, we uh, we can sometimes get called by better. Ace three is better, right? So yeah, so see, and nine eight, uh, and these king x hands are just yeah, they're all just all better. So it's just too too thin to bet with two pair. Um, and queen jack is the is that the only two pair we land on this river with? Queen ten, queen jack, queen ten. Uh, Jack ten would just bet turn. I think it is right. We don't have Ace three that would bet the turn as well. So literally, it's just Queen Jack Queen ten, and it's just too thin because we can get called by better, right? Like nine eight or uh, Ace three. Cool, right? So that's yeah, quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of stuff to to pull from this hand. So big bet flop, you know. An awareness of what's going on on the, on the turn is continue to bet your best ace x hands and your two pair. Um, you can bet your weakest hand like seven six. Um, but when we when we check, um, it's important that our opponent checks with some king x hands. Otherwise, you know, we potentially can go for value here. I guess that's the other thing as well, right? Why can we bet top set rather than two pair? But if we bet too many two pair and we get raised, we're in a horrible spot. I mean, I don't know what pocket queens would do against. Uh, could be better and get jammed on. Like Queen's just gonna fold, right? Yeah, that makes sense. City Poker says, could you show your reaction to check raise flop? Uh is there any push or pure call because nuts locked? Yeah, there, there was some raising, just there's no uh, there's no uh there's no jamming, it's just raising. You can still raise over three bigs to like eight and a half bigs, as you can see here. Um so uh, ace jack ace ten, some bluffs as well. Uh we did go right through that at the right at the start. But uh, I know that you came into this hand uh, a little bit later, so that's cool. Um, all right, let's go to the next hand because I'm not sure how long we took on that, but maybe like 20, 20 minutes, <laughs> something like that. Um, let's see if this works. Okay. Uh, cool, let's go to the next one. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, here we are then, 30 big blinds, we min raise. It's probably quite close actually with the two short stacks in the button and the big blind. Um, I'm not looking at uh, pre-flop today, I'm gonna do lots of post-flop. Uh, I think there's maybe one pre-flop spot we're gonna take a look at the range viewer for, but that's it. Um, City Poker says, I mean three bet in position. I'm not sure what you... Oh, you want to see? Th oh, check raise. You want to see the reaction to the check raise flop? That's a that's a really good question. Um, that's this one. So yeah, there is some some jamming here. Uh, quite a lot actually. Shout out to was it suited for the follow? Uh, yeah. So calling with straights and sets. It looks like although ten seems to be going with it. And um, folding a lot of nothing. Kings and queens are just going to have to fold. Remember that our range is like so strong on this board that if our opponent wants to raise. They, I mean, they're going to be polar, but they're going to have like some really, really, really strong hands, and kings and queens are going to do really poorly against uh, against that. Cool. All right, we've got to move on. Let's uh, let's look at the next one. So yeah, so this is probably quite close. Um, small blind calls, and we get this board. Um, so first thing we're studying is thinking like what you know what kind of strategy are we going to uh employ here my approach would just be small bet and well small bet a lot i think i'm not sure how many queen x hands our opponents defending silly pokers uh thanks for the follow so i think yeah i think just 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 small bet i'll show you what happens in the hand so we get check raise really really small it's like what less than 3x um so we're never folding there's a lot of hands that we would call here um but top pair seems very very strong 
Um, and the turn's the King of Hearts, and our opponent checks. Shout out to Scout CA for the follow. Um, opponent checks, and my question for the to, when we look at the solution now is, what's the overarching strategy on the turn? Um, because I went small bet, and I just don't think it's right. Like it just, like when I was reviewing this without, so I was running the solve, and I was like running through this hand, and I thought, small bet, like what what I'm actually trying to do here? Like I'm just trying to get value from weaker queen x hands that are, that are check raising but we're playing against the small blind not the big blind so how many how many weaker queen x hands does he have like does he flat queen six queen four queen three queen two in the in the small blind like that's not really going on right so i don't think betting here i think this again is just uh the bet is too thin now very often you can see that um small bets uh before you get to the river uh can be like you, you would size down to bet thinner, right? Whereas you wouldn't do that on the river because you could just check back. Um, so yeah, I think, I think again, this is, this hand is like the queen jack on the river in the last hand. We it's too weak given the small blinds range to to bet because we're just going to get called by better queen x like if he's got king queen or queen jack or queen ten, and he doesn't have enough of those uh, those queen x hands. So I think this is going to be a check um, actually. Uh, oh yeah, I'll show you what happens. I bet small and he jams. Um, and I fold. Um, so yeah I, 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 yeah, I don't like it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have a look at this. Um, Mr. Jam saying big bet or check. It's strange that villain checks the turn. I felt like he was like gonna go. For, he's got like a combo draw. That's like the worst hand he has, right? And he's a like a nine eight of diamonds or a six four of di uh, nine eight of diamonds. Six four of diamonds is thin, like to flat from the small blind, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, could be pretty reasonable to to, to double check raise. But uh, hmm. uh, Poker says my first reaction was uh, as a cash player, instant check back. But it could be wrong. Okay. Darren Piper on YouTube says check back. Yeah, I think I think I think check is nice. I think and uh, not just because we bet small and we get jammed on. Like as I said before, like whilst the the sim was running, I looked at this and I just thought this doesn't. Doesn't really make sense. Um, so this is why we do this, right? This is why we mark hands, we study them, and we try and work out what on earth is going on. So uh, yeah, let's have a look at the solution. Hopefully this is going to work. Okay, so uh, interesting. Like there's no Queen Jack, Queen 10 suited. I think they're 30 bigs. Well, certainly in Chippy V world or land. They three bet or three bet jam those hands, but there are some queen jack and queen ten hands in here. I was just talking about queen eight. Oh, there's some queen seven, but obviously queen seven's ahead of us. Queen six does actually call a decent amount. All right, let's have a look at this. Um, let's have a look. Ed says can't see villain che like check raising like queen eight suited. If he even calls pre, overarching strategy is that we might bet again to get some queen x to fold. To fold. Oh, seven x. But this exact hand feels like a check back. I think it's optimistic to try and get a queen to fold on the turn. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, the overarching strategy here then is to bet small. That's what we just talked about. Um, that's what I went went with. And our opponent is check raising some queen nine, queen eight, uh, queen jack off, queen ten off, quite high frequency. King queen suited for sure. Uh, that's a lot of raising, isn't it? Thirty percent. So I mean, it's. I adjusted this raise size to be the same size as they used, so um, maybe that means that they get to raise more. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, as continues, we obviously need to be continuing with all of our um, Queen X on, on the flop. And then we get, we're going to continue with flush draws and backdoor flush draws. Remember I said right at the start, like if you just check, line check your hand here, Queen 9 off, yeah, cool, yeah, move on to the next, uh, next street. Like, poor. That's all I'm going to say. I think it's really, really poor. Um, we want to see like what our whole strategy looks like. So interestingly, we get to continue as weak as threes, twos with a diamond, I presume. Yep. Um, and then uh, even like ace eight off with, with a diamond. Now that is because he's raised so small, right? The raise size is 32% pot, which is tiny. So we're supposed to continue a ton of the time. And it's just good to see it like in, I guess, black and white or colors that are, that are used here. Uh, okay, the turn was the king of hearts. And it is weird to see them check. But like, so queen jack, queen 10 does check. As do queen 9, queen 8, uh, even a bit of queen 7. 
that's the kind of thing I was thinking, you know, you know, just go straight to the top pair. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really make sense. Ed said before about, you know, betting to try and get a queen to fold. A queen, as you, no, this is not, let's go back here. A queen, a queen 10 off does fold a little bit of the time. A little bit, but I think in practice, I think all of these queen x hands are just going to continue. So you can see queen nine off doesn't doesn't make any sense to bet. Same with queen eight, queen six, queen four. Interesting to see some queen five check actually. Um, but if we do have aces, we're going to bet. If we have top pair, top kicker, we're going to bet. We have two pair, we're going to bet. King x just betting betting a lot. Um, and we do have a lot of this, right? We have all of these king x hands because our opponent raised so small on the on the flop. So. Yeah, and also, like, can you see here? Like, it's just big bet and check, right? Again, it's a polar strategy on the turn. Um, I'd love to see if there's any small betting, like on a diamond, for example. Yeah, so you can see this lighter sort of salmon-y, pinky color on the diamond. So that would make sense. So, like, I, I don't want to defend the fact that I bet small here, right? I don't think it's very good. Um, but on a diamond, it would be kind of acceptable. Um I'm trying to think like this is a, just a, a very polarizing card where we where we're going to bet you know some strong hands for value, and then the hands in the middle are just going to go ahead and, and and check again. So just to kind of highlight this, if you uh, if you use Pio, you'll you'll know this already. But you can just click on here, um, and you'll get the all of the hands that are that are betting in here. So you can see it's basically like top pair plus betting for value. And then the hands in the middle seem to disappear a bit. And then we see like ace highs and, and nothing. Um, but if we just go second pair, I mean, queen nine suits betting. Like this doesn't feel too bad <laughs> with uh, with queen nine off here. But um, if queen nine suited is betting, but yeah, we just basically want to have a best, better queen than queen nine off. So the kicker is going to be important here. Um, third pair, we're starting to bet some seven X, presumably to well, to deny equity, I guess, and to get, I mean, maybe you can get some 7x to fold. Maybe. Uh, low pairs, so betting your 5x, 2s, 3s, and 4s as well. And then there's some bluffs from, from ace high and, and then nothing type hands. Uh, let's have a quick look at this. So, yeah, this is the kind of 7x I was thinking, like ace 7. But it's only ace 7 suited and has to be non-diamonds because a pair in a flush draw is always going to continue. Um... Yeah, not really, not really sure why we're going to go ahead and bet six five if we can't really generate too many folds from from better hands or folds from too many, too many better hands. Let's have a look at some of the chat. So, according to our range, it seems like we have a lot of better hands to bet. One hundred percent. Yep, I think so. So it's almost like this: like if we know we're going to be polarized, we want to have value hands here, we want to have bluffs here. Those are the two hands hand classes that are going to bet because it's a polarized strategy. And then the hands in the middle are going to check. And so queen nine just you know not good enough to value bet too good to bluff let's just check so i think uh, that's why it's yeah good to to understand that and then go go to where your hand is where it makes uh makes sense i think um cool let's have a look um we defend a lot of king x absolutely to check raise on the flop i think after we get check raised we go big on most turns just because we're not three bet flop we have a lot of air or kind of slow plays so most turns go big probably yeah apart from the diamonds as we saw uh saw before uh, but yeah, so no no small betting. So that's a pretty big, pretty big win. I mean, the thing is that these um, these spots don't come up that often, right? Normally you just bet flop and they fold or bet flop and they call, right? That's the most common common thing that happens. And you play a turn in position versus check call. Whereas check raise and then check. So I guess like the, another thing that happens is they check raise, but then they blast off on the turn. When that doesn't happen, like understanding what the uh, strat strategy is supposed to look like, I think is is really really important. Let's see what happens if uh, if they just blasted here. So like if they bet big, we just have to continue. Obviously, if they bet small, we're always continuing. If they jam, we can start folding, but unlikely to see any jams. Um, I think that's it for for this hand. I think it's fairly obvious the kind of hands we would continue versus a bet. We just continue with draws and pairs. And start folding our weakest stuff. So like, yeah, we can continue Jack Nine of Diamonds, but we'd start folding like, yeah, some five X, I guess, and some seven X and weaker draws. Cool. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. Let's see see what happens. Oh yeah, this is a fun hand. 
So under the gun opens, we flat, and the board comes ace, queen, nine. Our opponent goes for a small bet, and we call. And our opponent bets uh, this amount on the turn. So one thing I want to look at is, are there actually going to be some over bets here for this player? They've got a lot of strong hands here, haven't they? Like aces, queens, uh, ace nine, queen nine, queen eight. Uh, anything else? Uh, nines and eights. Yeah, all the sets, basically. I'm not sure they would bet eights for a small bet on the flop, but maybe we'll have a look and see. But uh, yeah, there's like, they got a lot of strong hands. Now we're obviously never going to fold like top pair, but we don't have a backdoor flush draw, which kind of sucks uh, on the flop. But yeah, on the turn, I, I just wonder if like maybe they just get to go like, what would it be, like 11, 12 big blinds? And the bigger they bet, the more we're likely to fold this hand. Whereas against this size, I think we just have to call. Um, could they be betting like King Jack, King 10? Do they just take this line with, you know, a weaker race? But, I mean, any weaker race is going to play the board, right? Same as us. Um, mm, not sure. Jack 10 now a straight <clears throat> we, that we were ahead of on the on the flop. They could just have, like, just, just be trying to send it with fives or sixes, sevens, something like that. I don't know. Sounds not sure. We'll have a look at that as well. Um, but yeah, I think against an overbet, our hand becomes indifferent. I think against this size, we're just forced to call just because we just, you know, we'd fold too much. Otherwise, like we float the flop with some backdoor flush draws and then the eights of club, like what have we got left to call? Uh, and then our opponent bets. And the question now is, is jamming too thin or should we just call? What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. Are you calling here? So we face a triple barrel. Small bet on the flop, two bigger bets on the turn. This is like, six, I don't know, 63, 64% pot on the river. I'm Lunchbox, first time chat. Shout out to you for, for being here. It says, too thin to jam. Okay. And is that because we just won't get called by worse? Like, yes, okay, sometimes we're going to run into it, like sets and ace queen and ace nine and ace eight. But what about the times when he has queen nine and queen eight and nine eight and eight seven? What about those those uh, those hands? Darren Piper on YouTube says these are the hands that get me weak top pairs against DP. Yeah, I mean he's got a lot of strong hands. Like to be honest, it's it's really odd because like I think on a blank river, if I don't improve the two pair, I would just fold, which again might be too too weak. Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, Silly Poker says, I think if there is some overbet, Solver goes for a bluff from under the gun side with maybe uh, hands like tens. Yeah, so maybe like tens and jacks, maybe. I'll have a look at that. Mr. Jam on Twitch says, as, as I'm not blocking a straight draw, I would just call or make a tight fold. Um, what, on the river? I mean, river, I don't think we get to fold two pair because they can but value bet worse, like queen nine, queen eight, nine, eight, eight, seven, I think. Because we still have like some ace x hands, uh, like, uh, well, I mean, if we call with a7, we're going to call with all the other weaker ace x hands, right? Uh, Karen on YouTube says jam. Uh, Darren says one of them, close your eyes and call jam. Close your eyes. Quelly, Quelly UK is now following on Twitch. Awesome. Thank you. Um, close your eyes. I mean, I, th I think it's probably is too thin to jam, but. Maybe that's then in solver. Like, if your opponent never calls with queen nine, queen eight, eight seven, nine eight, eight seven. Is that, I already said that. Um, then jam. We can't jam. We can't jam for value because there's nothing we're getting value from. Jack still beating tens and blocks folds with king jack off, which we probably have. Do you think we call turn with king jack? I'm not sure. Uh, Ed says he doesn't have Jack Ten because he should go polar bigger sizing. I mean he's gone fairly big. Like this might just be his big bet on the turn and the river. Uh, call does Villain ever call worse two pair if we jam? Probably not. Yeah, exactly. That's why I just went through. Um, 
Yeah, I think uh, I think I, I think we I think we call. Um, we'll we'll play a game in a moment of of what we think our opponent had. But before we do that, let's um, let's take a look at the solution. Okay, so first thing I think is is a learning point. Uh, you should always try and catch this. Like if again, if you just go, all right, yeah, let's just see what we do with our hand, right? Yeah, cool. Most of the time, that looks good. We're gonna miss the key part, which is the out of position. Actually, see bets like a lot on this board. Now, we just go back to the flop. This is uh, MP versus cutoff. All right, so they're out of position. And if you follow the streams for a while, or you uh, are part of um, my programs, you'll know that out of position as the free flop raiser you're going to do quite a lot of checking. But this board is just so good for them that their betting is uh, you know, really high frequency. So, um, yeah, 56% out of position in this spot as the preflop raiser is is actually really, really big. That's really high. Like, generally, it would be like 51, 49, 52, 48, sometimes even behind the, the out of position player. Now, yes, this player is opening from middle position or under the gun seven-handed, and we're in the cutoff. The further you are away from the player, the more C betting you're going to do. Whereas if it was like EP versus MP, more checking. If it was cutoff versus button, more checking. But given it was MP, so like under the gun seven handed and cutoff, uh, we're going to see see more betting. Uh, but this is, yeah, this is really, really high. And so I think this is a really, really good learning point. Uh, let's have a look. I'm lunchbox surprised by that out of position strat. Very interesting. Why are you surprised? Because it's so much betting for an out-of-position player, which if it is, that, that, I think you've, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Silly Poker says, I think we should uh, we should continue King Jack off on the turn versus EP in there for better bluff tens because Jack's blocks folds. Okay. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Second, just check the stream's doing all right. Well, we got some, uh, we've got a lot of views on, uh, on, YouTube, shout out to the YouTube uh, YouTube watchers. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to continue with all of our ASEX. Let's see where we find our raises from. So set of nines, I mean, that makes sense. Unblocking ASEX and Queen X. Uh, two pair, going to get value from lots of hands straight away. Ace King, Ace Jack. Just getting value from a lot of ASEX. Um, we don't have any under pairs because kings with three bet pre. Second pair, we're just going to call. Uh, third pair, generally just going to call. Looks like there's some bluff raising going on with 10, 9, 9, 8. Presumably to get folds then from, from let's see. Kings is indifferent. Yeah, so jacks, jacks and tens suddenly starts folding. So we're raising a hand like a nine. Okay. Cool. And then we're going to, yeah, so the... I think these under pairs are the ones uh, we'll try and look at a hand actually later on. I'm just conscious of time. So we'll look at a hand later on where we have an under pair to the board, or maybe it's third pair. Um, I think there's this tendency to see this and just go, yeah, folding looks good. It kind of goes back to shout out to Mountain, Mountain Man 4444 four, 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 for the follow. Um, goes back to what we were saying earlier. If you line check, you're going to miss some key learning, right? So in this spot, um, these aren't even under pairs really, are they? Because that would be kings. Um, just low pairs, basically. I think there's this tendency to just, you know, see this as a fold and just fold all the time, right? But you'd be way over folding if you fold all of these pairs 100% of the time. Uh, interesting twos, like, twos are just loving it. Look at this. Twos is like, right, we're going to do some raising, certainly get some better hands to fold. Um, they're also going to call and do some funky stuff later. I mean, that's a pretty big takeaway. And like, it almost seems creative to, I'm just like thinking now, trying to think like what, you know, what called sort of turns and rivers are we gonna be, you know, trying to, trying to bluff. But our opponent doesn't start with many two X and three X hands. So we're completely unblocking like hands that will fold later on. So I think that's quite nice. Uh, some votes here as to what hand our opponent has already, so um, we'll we'll get to it. Um, but yeah, just make sure we're not overfolding here. One of the things I talk about in my programs is facing a C bet when you're in position. If you face a small bet, 
you are supposed to continue a ridiculous amount of the time. And you can see there, we're only folding 19%. We don't want to overfold here and start folding all of these uh, 100%. Okay, the turn was a card I cannot remember. The Eight of Clubs, okay. So on the Eight of Clubs, let's have a look at this. So no jamming, but there is, yeah, this is what I was trying to, work out was there going to be some over betting and there absolutely is so against the over bet i mean our hand actually still continues but it's starting to be indifferent yeah that's uh that's pretty pretty interesting but against the smaller sizing like you can see we just continue with all of our a6 um who mentioned about king jack yeah i mean king jack i said that king jack would fall right and this is a good example of like earlier on i said like the the eight seven six is five so like people over fold you know i just said i would fold king jack and, and you can see it's continuing half the time so we've got to make sure that we're not over folding um we can start folding seven three sixes now jack starts to fold a lot tens folding king queens folding yeah, King Jack off is a, it's an interesting one because King Jack suited wants to fold a lot. Still continuing with all, all of our ace x. Um, let's move on to the river, which is the seven of spades. And now our opponent can jam, can bet big, can bet small and check. And certainly there is some we there are some weaker hands betting than, uh, uh, than our hand. So we don't want to fold um, uh, for value, by the way. Um, all right, well, ace, so it looks like ace seven of clubs actually gets to jam sometimes here. This is where I'm like, w uh, what's going on? Why is ace seven of clubs jamming and ace seven of diamonds is uh, is calling? Um, do you guys have any ideas? Let me know in the chat. Um, it's going to obviously be something to do with the suits on the board. There's no clubs on the flop, right? So, but there are, there's one diamond. So there's, there, there'll be something in that, but maybe we just, we'll be here too long trying to work it out. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, so if we jam, yeah, queen nine is indifferent. Nine eight is indifferent, but mainly calling. It's a bit of eight seven in there. But then we also get called by ace eight, ace nine, ace queen. Uh, ace king folds, well, there's no point because we're already ahead of ace king and it's not, we're not going to get value from it. Although ace king's indifferent. MU Digital, thanks for the follow. Um, mm, I think it's too thin to jam for value, unless we're playing against a bot, in which case, jam for value. <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, so for River Strat, we still have Jack 10 suited, some nines, some ace queen, ace nine suit that we could consider jamming for value before ace seven suit, with these being able to be called by worse at varying frequencies. Yeah, I like it. Let's uh, let's just go back there. So ace nine, ace eight, jack 10, uh, queens sometimes. We've got some nines and some eights. So yeah, I, I really like that analysis. Uh, I'm lunchbox zero seven. Uh, Mr. Jam, don't have a clue. I was wondering, uh, I'm lunchbox and owned by the sim. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let, I think that's good. Um, again, like I just want to have a look at some more hands. So we're going to play the game of uh, what do we think our opponent had. Put it into the chat now. What do you think? You only get one guess because we're going to see it. Uh, Karen on YouTube says King 10 for a bluff. Darren on YouTube says I think he had Ace Queen. So better two pair. What else are you guys going for? Mr. Jam on Twitch is going for Ace Queen. Shadow is going for Pocket Nines. Silly Poker is going, oh, it's going two votes. I'm going to take the first one with Ace King. Interesting. I think Ace King is like, I think Ace King value bets River. It's like, I wonder if that's too thin. Yanis says Ace Jack, even thinner. It depends if we, uh, we're supposed to call with like weaker Ace X hands or. Hands like Queen Jack, Queen 10, blocking Jack 10, and sets, and two pair, right? Mountain Man 44444, uh, first time chat says King 10. Okay, right, let's, uh, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Pocket Nines, who said that? Shadow BV09, it's even in your name with the Pocket Nines. Uh, congratulations. Very good. Right, let's move on.
King Queen. Okay. So we min raise, big blind calls, flop comes jack, ten, deuce, flush draw. Um, and uh, we bet and we go for a small size quarter pot. So there's lots going on in this hand. One of the questions I've got for the sim, shout out to EQ makes for the follow. Shadow BV says, what did I win? <laughs> you, you, you got a shout out. Uh, and congratulated on on the stream. What like how could there be a possible better prize than that? Um, the questions here. I I think I bet too small in these spots. Now, generally, two Broadway boards. We're gonna have small bets, right? We're gonna bet very frequently. The board is really good for us, but I think EP versus big blind specifically, we're gonna have some big bets as well. Our opponent isn't going to fold a jack or a 10, maybe not even a 2. So if we big bet, and especially at this stack size where we the big bet won't you be like massive, be like 60% pot, maybe even under, then I think hands like queens and uh, kings, ace-jack, maybe some two-pair gets to, gets to go big here. So yeah, I think it's... Uh, I think there are going to be some, some hands that we want to go big. And I think... So the reason I highlighted it in-game is because I'm aware of this. In game, I'm like, I'm not sure quarter pot is always going to be the right answer here. So Silly Poker says multi-size board, all sizes. Yeah. Um, say all sizes. That's like, make it, makes it sound like more than two. How many sizes do you want to use, Silly Poker? Silly Poker says you can build your own strat strategy to skip such a crazy mix. Yeah, but I think there's some hands that will benefit from a bigger bet, right? Like pocket queens and the best jack X and some two pair. And me, well, we don't have pocket twos, but if we did, um, like top set, I don't think we'd want to go big. But I think the sort of the stronger but more vulnerable hands will want to go uh, big sizing. Ziggeriz says jack high connected boards, 20 to 30 big blinds effective, big bets, I'm thinking. Okay, yeah. I wouldn't call this jack high connected. Like, I would call this a two Broadway board with a rag, right? Um, but I guess it's just about how you classify this kind of board. Silly Poker's going for at least four bet sizes on this board, in theory. Oh, interesting. I mean, you, like with a solver, you can do whatever you like, right? You can give it four bet sizes if you want. But... I would never, never do that with a solver because, well, first up, what's the point? How much, how much EV are you really going to gain? And also, how on earth are you supposed to work out what goes down the, the big, like the biggest bet, and then the second biggest bet, and then the medium bet, and then the small bet? I think going for a two, uh, two bet size approach is is much, much better. I know there's been debate in, uh, in the industry. Um, you know, DTO has has two bet sizes. I've always preferred two bet sizes. When I first started making uh, training content, I, I did actually go for the four bet size approach at like 40 bigs. And like, it it's not easy to learn. And I think it's actually pretty useless. So it's, anytime I see like five or six bet sizes used, I just, uh, yeah. I, the game's complicated enough. We don't need to overcomplicate it by, or make it more complicated by using umpteen uh, bet sizes so yeah i would try and try and limit it if we can uh so silly poker says i prefer actually one bet size flop and split to two or three on the turn of river yeah i think i think that could be uh could be okay ian simpson poker in the chat go and uh, go and give ian simpson poker a follow guys he is a great streamer and he's part of our Train and Play Like the Pros and Academy uh, programs. And uh, yeah, he's, I don't know if he's streaming today. Ian, are you streaming today? If you are, then uh, uh, you guys can watch uh, watch Ian stream. Um, uh, okay, so that's the first question. In fact, let's, let, let's try and answer that straight away. Okay. Yeah, so I just gave it small and big. And you can see, yeah, big isn't even that big, right? 56% pot. Um, <laughs> some uh, some unfair comments in the chat. Whale alert. Ed, you can't talk about yourself like that. It's not fair. And if you're talking about Ian, that's not, that's not very fair either. Um, 
Cool. Right. Um, so yeah, big bet and small bet here. Uh, no checking. Always going to be betting on these boards. As I said, two Broadway rag. Uh, just much better for the imposition player. So we can see, look, almost 70% equity. Just, yeah, loving life. Um, so I said like jacks and tens probably don't want a big bet. So you can see that's the case. We don't have to, so we can't talk about it. But like jack 10, is there is some big betting going on. And then I said like queens and kings, right? But even aces really likes a big bet. So yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's that's good to see. Just having a look at some of the other stuff as well. Um, all right, well I'm not going to read out the chat right now because it's getting a little bit silly. Um, okay, so definitely can can find some some bigger bets. King Queen off. We had the King of Clubs. I mean, it goes big sometimes, goes small sometimes. Maybe it doesn't matter too much. Silly Poker says, this is already a crazy mix, so I go with only one size in reality. I mean, I, I think as humans, we can learn to play this strategy. I'm just not sure if half pot is the way. I mean, half pot is the bigger bet size almost, right? So if you only get big bet and check, you might even have to start checking some hands. Right? Um... I'm not sure. I have never run it for, for just one bet size. I think it's uh, something interesting to look at. Uh, yeah, King Jack and Ace Jack, just the same as kind of Queens, Kings and Aces. Seems to be betting quite frequently. Uh, apart from King Jack of Clubs, just so much equity. Blocking a lot of continues, so that's good. But then when we unblock continues, we just want to go big. Um, but anyway, yeah, we bet and our opponent called. Let's go back to the hand. Okay, so for all of those of you who were here earlier on and we said this is a blank turn card what's the overarching strategy on the turn forget again like hopefully by now guys you know we're not worried about our hand what does our strategy look like what do you think the sim is going to do on this card which is a blank right it doesn't complete a straight doesn't complete a flush doesn't pair the board isn't an over card it's not an ace so it's a blank right what do you think our overarching strategy looks like here let me know in the chat All right, let's have a look at this. So primarily big, yeah. I mean, big, yeah, but we also do some checking, right? We we don't just bet big. Uh, there's a ton of over bets in huge stacks, like 40 big blinds. Um, generally speaking, at 40 big blinds, the over bet, uh, there won't be an over bet because the geometric size is about pot. So if you've got an SPR of four, then the geometric size is going to be pot. That's something to just remember. Um, so... You know, we've got less than way less than four. Our sizing is not going to be anywhere near pot. But if we, yeah, if we had 32 big blinds behind, we are going to see, um, yeah, 32, 33 big blinds. So we would have started the hand with like 36, 37 big blinds. Then we, um, the biggest bet we're going to use, the geometric sizing, is going to be um, pot. Um, don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> I remember there's a, there's like a little there's like a clip that's like the most you could better raise is the size of the pot. Um, I feel like it was on a podcast, but I can't remember where I've heard it. Ian Sims is a geometric or check. Love it. I, I think this is going to be a geometric or check. Um, Silly Poker says, not sure in 20 bigs. Yeah, so going back to what you were saying about 40 bigs, like it needs to be bigger than 40 bigs, basically. 40 bigs would be just over pot um, if we'd gone small on the flop. Um, but yeah, 50 bigs plus. You see, I mean, I know you said 40 bigs plus. So like, yeah, 50 and 60, we're going to yeah, definitely see some over bets because the SPR is going to be greater than four. Um, oh, yeah. So maybe some pushing. So like shoving for two and a half X pot. That'd be interesting to have a look at. I'm not sure we will, but we, we will see. City Poker says, the one thing I learned from the solver, he does not care about the river SPR. <laughs> 
Well, we will see. Um, I know that Ian is going to be streaming straight after us. So uh, if anybody in the chat knows how to do a raid, I just put it into Google. But um, to start a raid, it says type. I never know if this is a forward slash or a backslash. Forward slash? Raid. Followed by the name of the channel you wish to raid. So we'll we'll just put that in and then see if we can raid Ian Simpson. At the end of this stream, we're not done yet, guys. We've still got more to study because we're I mean we're halfway through our hand. Um type and then my alias. Awesome, Ian, I'll do it. I will send a raid over to you. Um I know that you're starting your stream shortly. Um cool. Right, let's uh let's go back to uh, actually let's do this. So I I decided to check. And the reason why I marked this hand, I mean, not only the bet size thing on the flop and this, this sort of over, overall strategy, but the the turn was like, I don't think we bet king-queen all the time on the turn. I think 9-8, if we ever have it, is more likely to check. Because you don't really want to get bet, like, jammed on. So we want to bet and get jammed on. King-queen, I just wasn't, I wasn't 100% sure. Queen-9 as well, I'm not sure. Like, I know that we don't really, yeah, we don't want to, bet fold too frequently but like I would like to see like in terms of draws this is one of our best draws yes we could have like you know combo draws and flush draws as well but king queen especially with the king of clubs seems to be like a, a very like uh, yeah I'm, I'm not sure honestly uh so I want to see that um and this is what I was talking about earlier on is about when it comes to study we're not yeah we are looking at our exact hand at the moment but I'm thinking about grouping it right in terms of okay really strong straight draw or a queen nine or a nine eight you know they're all eight out straight draws but some are going to bet and some are going to check i think um so that's good to look at what are we doing with other draws like flush draws where are we going to find some bluffs here so like we don't really have single club hands that aren't already part of like a piece um so i'm thinking like ace king ace queen with a club is already a gut shot two over cards stuff like that uh tom Ryder, thanks for the follow so yeah we just yeah if we were further around we might have a hand like ace x like ace five off with the ace of clubs right that we that we would start betting but we don't have that from from this position um so yeah i'm not 100 percent sure but i think maybe we should bet here quite frequently and then our opponent checks again and well there's so much to unpack from this hand i just wonder with the king of clubs if we've just got to send it now for just over two and a half X pot. Like it's so hard for them to call. Like they, they, they basically have a jack or a 10, I think. They could, or a two, I guess. And it's very, very hard to call with, with those hands. They could have some flushes and I think they, they absolutely should have some flushes. Um, we can have a six to jam for value. We can have flushes to jam for value. We can have mm, bluffs like missed uh sorry blockers like ace of, ace of clubs and king of club hands i i think that jamming here would be really really nice silly poker says i would send it on the mid stakes yeah mid stakes plus i think i've missed i think i've missed it i think turn so basically flop we can go either way small bet or big bet turn i think is probably going to be a mix but on the river i think this is a mandatory jam <laughs> Uh, looking at it now. What a horrible spot to be in, even with a jack. But some jack X are going to raise the flop, right? So it's going to be a weak jack, or it's going to be, um, you know, uh, a 10. And those hands are going to have to have a club in them to, like, be more thrilled about calling. Huh. Hmm. Let's have a look here. Darren on YouTube says, bet big again. Kavian Bina on YouTube says bet five big blinds or jam. Right, let's have a look at the sim. Zuger is, I don't know how to say that, but we'll go with that. Um, what hands are you getting him to fold? Uh, a 10, a two, basically. Are you thrilled with like 10, three of diamonds to, to call here versus two and a half X pot? Because the, th the I guess the thing is from his his point of view, what um, what is like we don't I don't think we take this line with pocket tens for example. Like to check turn, I, I think we would just bet again. 
So what? Um, so having it, if he has ten three of diamonds, that's not a very good bluff catcher, right? Because he doesn't block any of our value hands. If if we see the sim and tens checks back turn, then maybe ten three of diamonds becomes a better call on the river. Um, we might take this line with top set. So maybe having a jack would be better than having a ten for that reason. Uh, but yeah, we can get some ace highs to fold as well. Um, a six of spades, yeah. Uh, a six with a you know with one club. He should have some pocket pairs as well with a club. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, all really good. I think we should have a look at this. This is really good. Well done, guys. It's uh, it's really nice, uh, really nice ideas. I like this a lot. Uh, oh, we're already here. So the turn was a blank six. Was that right? Six of hearts. Okay, so no jamming, no small betting. This is what we said earlier on. It's a blank turn card. We're always going to see like Big Ben check. Uh, let's just confirm this. So a blank. These are all really blanks. Two is, I mean, that's why you're starting to see some small betting is because it's not a blank because it's, you know, pairs the board. Um, Ace and a king and a queen, they'll keep complete straights. Jack X it makes, it pairs the board. 10X pairs the board. 10X is the key one. Clubs will uh, complete a flush. And then, yeah, so you've got this big region here of, of big bets, big band check. Um, so this is something that I teach in my course, um, which is available for our academy members. Uh, in order to get to the academy, you've either got to be, you know, at a certain level already, or uh, you can join our training play at the pros program, which aims to get you to that point. Um, so if you would like more info about that, then I think the first step would be to join the Facebook group um, let me find you the link for that. Um, if you're not already a member, you should definitely, definitely join us. Um, I'm going to post the link on YouTube and also on Twitch. So you'll find, yeah, you just uh, find lots of you know, helpful stuff about tournament poker and um, some shameless plugs for my programs and my new book and things like that. Uh, you've probably seen it actually down here. My new book is coming... Well, I want to say soon, but it's it's absolutely not. It's supposed to become June 2023. It's actually finished. Uh, well, sort of. I've finished the first draft. I've written 79,000 words. There are over 200 charts in this book, plus the 79,000 words. So there's a lot of content. Um, I've absolutely no idea how thick it's going to be in the end. Um, if you've seen like Michael Acevedo's Modern Poker Theory, that's quite thick. And then you've got um, our book, Purposeful Practice for Poker, the one I did with Dr. Trisha Cardner, which is a lot thinner. I think it might be like thicker than that, but maybe not as thick as the Modern Poker Theory one. But honestly, like it's turned out like a lot of words and a lot of charts. So who knows? Um, all right. Poker T Trucks Pin 2004. This is now following. Thank you. I'm now following. Thank you very much. Um, Marshall Mike 24 says, waiting for Michael Acevedo's new tournament book to come out. Yeah, it's the workbook, isn't it? The one that accompanies the um, his modern poker theory. So uh, I think that comes out at the same time as mine. There's, there's three books by DMB coming out. There's um, one by Lexi Gavin, which is a small uh, guide to crushing small stakes tournaments, something like that. Uh, no worries, Ed. See you later. Um, there's Acevedo's workbook coming out. Uh, maybe that's coming out earlier in the year. And then uh, there's my book, which is uh, The Final Table, um, which is coming June 2023. So, yeah, lots to look forward to. Um, right, where... Let's... Uh, yeah, so if you're interested in learning you know, more about this, getting into the theory, learning about how to train and play like the pros, then join the Facebook group. Um, let's have a chat. Um, I always like to do that with everyone that joins the program. Have a chat about what you've got going on, what's best for you, which program is going to be right for you. And uh, yeah, uh, because at the end of the day, we want to see you make progress and and, uh, and get that bit better every single day. All right. So we, uh, big bet and check is what we said earlier on. King, queen though. I mean, it is mixing. King, queen off with a queen of clubs does a lot more checking, but our hand does a lot more betting. But I mean, it checks and it's not, yeah, it's not the end of the world. Maybe we get to see some betting. Let's see like the, the function of betting with our hand, what kind of 
you know, better hands gets to fold. So it's starting to fold some, some 10x hands in here. All the deuce x hands actually start folding apart from six deuce, which is now two pair. Um, we can generate some folds from ace queen as well, which is which is good. You've got some two x down here as, as well that folds. So yeah, we're we're getting some better hands to fold, which is uh, which is nice. And we block the hands that will continue like king ten and uh, and queen ten. Um, so that's that's good. So yeah, I can see the the merits of the logical reasons for wanting to bet a hand like ours. Uh, but there are some checks, or there are some checks as well. Interesting, like a hand like a7, when it's not the nut flush draw, wants to, to bet. For the same reason, we can get some some better hands to fold. Um, and then we're just going to check that with the nut flush draw. 6x now has enough showdown value. These hands are going to play exactly the same as a7, a8, a9. Ace 10 is like, again, showdown value. Ace Jack is too good to check. Ace Queen is kind of like King Queen in the two overs and a uh, a draw. Um, is King Queen bet folded? But let's have a quick look. No. Although our hand, so our exact combo, which was King X, Queen Y, um, sorry, King of Clubs, Queen Y, was... Um, is starting to fold because we want our opponent to have like that, right? So we would then call with king queen off without a club. That's basically what's going on here. Um, okay, so it went check check, and the river was the six of clubs. And let's just have a quick look at this. So our opponent blocks a ten. So we, I was just talking about jamming and getting a ten to fold, right? Um, and a jack tends to bet big. So what kind of hands are really going to struggle against the over bet? I guess it's this 2x hands in here. And like an ace queen. Yeah. Their opponents look, our opponent's bluffing with uh, with ace queen off with the ace of clubs here. So I, I think we're gonna be see, we're gonna do the same with ace queen off with the ace of clubs and king queen off with the king of clubs. Um not sure about ace king do the same thing, maybe. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Yeah, I think this is this is pretty interesting because we've got to make sure that our line makes sense. So, um, like if they're betting, uh, they're over betting with all of their jack x hands here. They're blocking most of their ten x, and then they check eights and sevens. Uh, somebody mentioned this before. Some pairs, like uh, yeah, that looks like it's the only ones actually. Eights and sevens, maybe. Worse hands than this fold like sixes. We well, can't have sixes with a club because the six of clubs on the river. I just want to go back actually have a look at this. Yeah, so eights and sevens only continuing with a club. Sixes with a club, but now there's a six of clubs on the river, so he doesn't have quads ever. Um, we shouldn't have. And then fives, fours, threes, and twos don't call. They might raise, uh, especially uh, twos. Um, okay, so. Yeah, so when our opponent checks, I mean, let's just have a quick look at this. So what I'm going to look for here is the highest frequency of hand that checks, right? So checking low pair, the biggest frequency is the, are these low pairs, eights, sevens. Oh, no, it's probably 2x, right? Yeah. So this is this is really useful, I think. A good way to, to look at Pio is to kind of look at this and say, right, this is the biggest portion of hands that really, really struggle. This is the biggest portion of hands that get to this river through a check and check the river um nothing doesn't really matter because we're ahead of those hands anyway there are some ace highs but a tiny amount but then there's some second pairs as well so actually this there is a decent amount so like second pair and low pair make up half of their range which is uh you know quite a lot um so yeah i think we're going to see some over bet jams let's have a look Da, 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 da. Okay, well, there's definitely some overbetting. Only with our combo, though. King of clubs, queen X, or queen Y, whatever you want to call it. Um, but there is some half-pot betting as well. I mean, yeah, does half-pot just get two to fold? Hmm. I mean, it's certainly overbet is going to get the job done more frequently. Um, there's some ace 10 that starts folding 10x yeah so the the, the jam is just going to generate way more folds from these 10x hands all the 2x hands of course um, never going to get flush to fold obviously eights with a club just going to station it off 
Um, okay, cool. What does Ace King off? Mm, doesn't do as much. Just has too much showdown value. Beats the Ace Queens um, and anything else that's not a pair, right? So just has too much showdown value. Whereas King Queen off, you can actually like it's just going to be slightly better to to jam blocking flushes. Um, that's a good point actually. Let's see how our opponent plays flushes on the river. Hmm. Hmm. I, like the reason why I'm going hmm is because our this not like oh yeah we block flushes, but our opponent doesn't check the king of like king X of clubs. Hmm. Want to I want to ponder, want to think about. I think for uh, for a bit. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go away and think about this. Um, right, I think that's gonna be it, guys. We've gone for like an hour and fifteen, hour and twenty minutes. Um, I'm gonna raid Ian Simpson. Do I need to stay on the stream, or can I cancel the stream once I've done it? Does anybody, does anybody know? Do I have to do? Do I have to do like? Um, like raid oh here we go raid channel send viewers to another channel when your stream ends right we're gonna try it guys we're gonna try it um i don't know how to do it though let's see if this works guys i'm gonna wrap things up i'm gonna try and raid ian simpson and send you guys over there um hope you've enjoyed that if you haven't yet click the follow button on twitch if you um want to subscribe on youtube that'd be great you know hit the like button if you would like to do that as well and don't forget to join the facebook group that is where lots of things happens we've got over four thousand members now in that facebook group so come and see what all the fuss is about and i'm going to try and attempt to raid let's see if it works apparently we're ready to raid ian simpson in four seconds I have no idea if it worked. <laughs> oh, I've got to click this button that says raid now. Nobody told me that. I've still no idea if this worked, guys. Um, I think we're still streaming on YouTube, so uh, who knows? Uh, maybe I should just cancel the uh, the stream. I'm gonna wrap things up, guys. 